Photoelectron Spectroscopy, or abbreviated PES. Photoelectron spectroscopy uses measurements of binding energies to understand atomic structure. And a simple picture here is we have a photon source here hitting our sample, and then electrons come out, and then they're put into this energy analyzer. And here we have a camera here to take pictures of the, uh, the results. The Bohr model accurately predicts energy levels for single electron atoms, such as hydrogen, helium plus one, lithium plus two, etc., but not the energy levels of multi-electron atoms. PES can be used to determine the energy levels of multi-electron atoms by measuring the binding energy between each electron and its atom. It can also determine how many electrons have that binding energy. This can be used to explore the electron structure of an atom. For the purposes of AP chemistry, binding energy can be considered equivalent to ionization energy. The differences between them are beyond the scope of this course. Electrons are bound to the nucleus by the Coulomb force, which leads to the electric potential energy of the atom being given by KQQ over R, where big Q is the positive charge on the nucleus, Q is a negative charge of an electron, R is the distance between them, and K is the Coulomb constant. Now don't worry about the equation, we're just showing it to you here. You will not need to solve quantitative problems with it. All variables on the right side of this equation are positive except for little q, the charge on the electron, which is negative. As a result, u, the potential energy of an atom, is negative. Adding an equal amount of positive energy brings the potential energy to zero and frees the electron. It can leave. The binding energy is the positive amount of energy needed to free an electron. If the added energy exceeds the binding energy, the extra amount of that energy is found in the kinetic energy of the ejected electron. The binding energy is determined by two major factors, the energy level and the atomic number of the atom. Let's first look at the effect of the energy level. An electron closer to the nucleus in a lower orbital, that means you have a lower value of n, has a higher binding energy. The electric attraction of unlike charges is stronger as they get closer together. And hopefully you can see as this r gets smaller, the potential energy gets larger in magnitude. It takes more energy to separate unlike charges which are closer together. Now let's talk about the effect of the atomic number. The higher the atomic number of an atom, the more protons there are in its nucleus. And that means this Q here gets bigger. That increases the binding energy because electrons will feel a greater attraction to the nucleus due to the greater nuclear charge. The potential energy will become a more negative number, which indicates that the electrons are more bound to the nucleus. Here's our picture again and we're bombarding the sample here with photons of varying energy. When the energy of one of these photons is equal to or greater than the binding energy of an electron, the electron is ejected. The number of the electrons and their kinetic energies are measured in the an energy analyzer. Electrons at various energy levels and subshells require different amounts of energy to be removed. Electrons closer to the nucleus are harder to remove because of the increased nuclear attraction. Electrons farther from the nucleus are therefore easier to remove due to the decreased nuclear attraction. And the valence electrons, therefore, are the easiest to remove. Any energy provided by the photon that is greater than the binding energy is transformed into the electron's kinetic energy. That's because energy is conserved. The photon's energy, which is h nu, equals the sum of the binding energy and the electron's kinetic energy. Measuring that binding energy by the energy analyzer reveals the orbitals occupied by the electrons in an atom. Every peak in your signal, over here, signal that can also be looked at by a camera, corresponds to the location of an electron. If there's more than one electron at the same location, the single signal will be larger. 
Two electrons will provide a signal with twice the intensity. Three will give three times the intensity. And don't worry, we'll be showing quite a few examples on this. And here is our first example. The results are plotted in a graph that plots the relative number of electrons emitted over here, which is related to the intensity, versus the measured binding energy. So we've got energy here and intensity there, or relative number of electrons. Unlike most graphs we do, this energy decreases as it moves, moves left to right. So here you have 2.37 eV, here's 1.31. The higher the peaks, the more electrons in the atom have that binding energy. Let's analyze our graph. More energy is required to remove an electron from helium than hydrogen. So helium has the higher binding energy than hydrogen. And note again, please, that the energy levels actually increase going this way, the amount of binding energy. Helium's electrons experience stronger Coulomb attraction due to the extra proton that helium has. The relative number of electrons released for helium is twice that of hydrogen, because helium has two electrons and hydrogen has one. So this should be around one and this should be around two in relative terms here. Though helium has two electrons, it has only one peak because its electrons have the same energy level. They are in the same orbit. It is two times the height of the hydrogen peak. Here's helium, here's hydrogen since it has two times the number of electrons. The helium peak, therefore, is at a higher binding energy to the left than the hydrogen peak. Since its nucleus has two times the number of protons, so it more strongly binds its electrons in the same shell. Add lithium to the graph. Here and here. Its two peaks indicate that lithium has electrons in two different subshells. The heights of the peaks show there is one electron in the n equal 2 orbit and two electrons in the n equal 1 orbit. The n equal 1 peak is to the left of the n equal 2 peak. That shows it has more binding energy as it is closer to the nucleus. Remember, binding energy decreases as you move from left to right and increases as you go from right to left. The n equal 1 peak for lithium has a higher binding energy than the n equal 1 peak for helium because lithium has one more proton than helium. The additional proton in the lithium nucleus results in a stronger Coulomb attraction. The lithium n equal 2 peak, its binding energy is lower than that of both helium and hydrogen because this electron is farther from the nucleus than helium's electrons and hydrogen's electron from their nucleus.